Now, if you saw an advert on social media asking if you'd like to become a polar explorer, would you apply? It involves training in temperatures of around minus 33, observing polar bears and trekking across sea ice. Well, none of that deterred Matthew Davis, who's a teacher from Truro. Yes, he'll be joining an expedition that aims to be the first to reach the northern pole of inaccessibility. But he's in safe hands as he'll be with Jim McNeil, who's one of the most experienced polar explorers. And both join us in the studio now. It's not something when you see an ad that not all of us would apply for. It's not. Um... But you know what Facebook's like? You're scrolling through <laughs> loads and loads of junk and Ice Warrior popped up and it said, do you want to be a polar explorer? I just finished my teacher training. I uh, hadn't committed to a full-time job as then. And I was like, yeah, why not? I, I like pushing myself. I, I'd love to be a person that's been somewhere that no one else has. And I jumped at the opportunity. So Jim, what does uh, Matthew have to do to prepare for this? What have you been putting him through to get him ready for this? Well, just about all the nasty things you can possibly imagine in a cold fashion, really. Yeah. We <laughs> train people to be modern day polar explorers and they are, are really put through everything that they're likely to encounter in the good times and the bad times. So training for the what ifs, what if it all goes wrong? And how bad could it get? Oh, it's, it's quite uh, I mean, it's life threatening. It's not really. the most brutal yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. on Earth, I guess. Yes, say for going underwater or up in space, it's the next worst thing, as it were. So I'm they... trying to put you off. <laughs> Not that. No, 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 I... <laughs> they are thoroughly trained in everything that makes them potentially uh, safe. Matthew, when you hear that though, and you've already done some training, you've been to Norway, you're off to the yeah. Arctic again in a week. Yeah. Do you think, now you've seen the real side of it, put you off at all? Uh, it did. Uh, I'm not going to lie, in the middle of it, when I was out, and it was dark, it was 24 hour darkness, and it was cold, really cold. And I was walking, just I couldn't see anything. Um, and I was like, yeah, why am I doing this? Um, but as soon as I got back to camp, you know, a few days later, it started to sink in, all the, all the um, training, what we'd been through, what we'd seen, what we'd experienced, stuff I've never experienced before. And as I flew home and saw the first bit of sunlight, because it's 24 hour darkness when I went, it really, made me think I want to do more I want to I want to see more I want to do more I want to be involved more you say you like pushing yourself which is why you went for the challenge but but ultimately what do you hope to get from this what what do you hope to learn and how do you hope to use that information in the future I hope to learn to not get angry with people <laughs> that's something I was talking to Jim about I hope to know that I'm able to survive somewhere in how hospitable in hospitable it was like. I want to know if I'm physically and mentally capable. Um, and I want to take that, my experience, my learning. I also want to do it for the world, the scientific research we're doing. But I want to take it back to the classroom. I want to educate the children on generations of tomorrow. And I want to share with them that they don't have to just follow that set way, get a job, get a house. There are opportunities like uh, expeditions. Um, whether it be in, in our world or indeed, you know, space, who knows. And Jim, he's in very safe hands, so you worked on Frozen Planet, didn't you? If anybody do, knows yes. what to expect, <laughs> it's you. <laughs> well, yes, I suppose so, yeah. I'm uh, very fortunate, yeah, I work on, worked on Frozen Planet and a lot of the other BBC productions as well, as a sort of safety guy, or where to find the animals in the first instance, and then I train the guys if they need training, kitted them out and, and everything else. But all this comes from the centre of Dartmoor as well, which is worth pointing out, in Princetown. That's where our base camp is, yeah. So you're off in, what, a few days' time? Next... Yeah, 30 if I fly out. So um, if you're on the train that day, I will have a handful of massive <laughs> Osprey bags taking up all the carriage, as I did last time I went. You could just hear people a bit upset from the other end. <laughs> But that's when we go out and we're back the 11th. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the big one next year. And then the big one next year. Last very year. Yeah. OK, well, good luck. Thank you very and much. Training and everything else. Thank you very, very much, much for coming in tonight. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Now to a challenge.